What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Pack-A-Day Podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. I am joined once again by the ever-amazing duo of Perry Goldstein and Alex Strofe. You can follow Perry at Perry underscore Goldstein. You can follow Alex at Alex underscore Strofe. We are going to be talking the Packers progress report so far this preseason. We're also going to talk some Patriots. There's a lot of P things going on. Perry, speaking of P things, how the heck are you doing? Good. I'm excited to talk about this game and this team, and we're getting so close to week one. I can feel it. It seems crazy. We were just talking offline. We are end of like basically end of August. One preseason game left. Two training camp practices left. Tuesday and Wednesday. They practice Thursday, which will be open to the media as well. I think the following week will be open to the media also. But like this is unbelievable. Like two two literal training camp practices left. It seems crazy. Alex, how the heck are you doing? I'm fantastic, guys. Uh, you're right. The, the summer flew by. We're here. Um, I have a lot of thoughts about what happened on Saturday, but also what we're going to get into later. So I'm I'm fired up. We're here, man. We we, we made it. Well, let's let's start right there. I want I want to hear all of your thoughts from Saturday. We'll we'll kick things off with talking a little bit of Packers Patriots. But Alex, what were your big takeaways? All right. So every time the three of us talk, I tell you I'm not going to overreact. I'm going to do There's that nothing right Tyler now. Goodson you can talk about. He didn't play, yeah, so I don't no, know what yeah. direction you're going in here. Uh, I'm going the direction everybody wants me to. I think I'm finally ready to say I think Jordan Love's going to be good. Um, that that second offensive drive had me jumping up and down, and I'm not even, like, joking. I got up off the couch and jumped once because I was so excited uh, of how upbeat and fast and together that offense looked. Uh, the, the challenge that initially I thought, to be honest with you, was a bad challenge that overturned that long sideline pass to Dobbs, the touchdown pass to Reed, uh, the blocks that we saw laid down by A.J. Dillon. I thought Zach Tom looked really good. Like, I was really excited about this offense. Um, for the first time, probably consistently this training camp. I mean, we've seen flashes, right? We've, we've seen the, the good looks in practice and the good looks in last week's game against Cincinnati. But that second drive on offense – has me so unbelievably excited um, that I think Jordan Love's actually going to be good. And that, that's not to say there won't be low points this year, right? It's, it's a long season. But what we saw in that second drive against New England makes me think there is going to be some really, really fun moments this year with Jordan Love. So I, that's it. My big takeaway is I'm ready to say I think Jordan Love's going to be good. I like it. Except it's the third offensive drive, but I'll forgive you for that. But Sorry, <laughs> you're right. Quick one. <laughs> Perry, we forget going. about the first one. Yes, correct. Very quick yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the first one didn't count uh, at all because stupid snap stuff. But yeah, no, I, I know exactly. Which what you're also, talking about. Josh Myers is bad. That's my other thought. Yeah, good, good call on that. He's he's had an interesting training camp so far. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Um, Perry, I want to get your thoughts on that as well, but I, I just want to follow up. I'm I'm not quite there yet. I've seen all all the things that you mentioned. I have seen all training camp. I have gone on and on about on all of the different episodes that I've done. He's making the right reads. He's in total command of the offense. Just like uh, I talked about it on yesterday's show as well, but the story of that, that Matt LaFleur told of like how he noticed that the, the play clock was running down on the first play of the game and just independently called a play on his own because he didn't want to have to take a timeout. And then he gets up there and then the referees noticed that the, the play clock was wrong and reset it. But just having the wherewithal and the, and the, like the knowledge of the offense to be able to go up there, call a play, get everyone set so that they didn't have to call a timeout. What are the odds that we don't even need to compare here, but what are the odds the previous predecessors at quarterback of, of Aaron Rodgers and, and uh, Brett Favre would have called a running play nonetheless on that play. Uh, I thought that was really cool that he called a running play on the first play too. But um, n neither here nor there. I, I, I'm not quite there to say like he's going to be really good. I think we need. I think we need to see how teams game plan against him in a regular season format and see him in a 17 game season. There's a di and there's also a difference between playing well and leading your team to victories. And I think that's a that's a big step that every young quarterback has to overcome and kind of go through. So I want to see him go through that process. But I'm very much at the point, and I talked about this a little bit as well of. I can't, it's really start, it's starting to get hard to imagine a situation where he's bad, right? Like I, it's like, if he like to be a bust and to just be terrible or like a really bad quarterback, that is getting harder and harder and harder to imagine because there's just too much that he is in command of and in control of. And like the, the, the floor continues to go up, but Perry, what were your thoughts on, on just Patriots Packers, whatever you want to talk about here? Yeah. You actually took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say my, my thought process is just that the floor keeps getting higher. I don't, I don't know what the ceiling is yet necessarily. And Andy, I totally agree. I, I feel like I can't say I feel confident 
that he's going to be good until I watch him play four quarters. Just because so much football can happen in a full game that you just don't get in three series. And again, it was really nice to see them bounce back after a horrible first drive, but to spread that out over the course of an entire game, like I just still think there's a lot to learn. Um, but I think Jordan looks really good. I, I, I just, I don't know. I, I'm excited about the way that he's playing with the rest of the pieces around him too. Um, I just think they've gotten a lot of talent. It's really young and raw and there's going to be, we've said it a thousand times, ups and downs. But I think like if they can put some of these pieces together that they have, it's going to be a very fun, it's going to be a fun season. I think regardless, it's, it's going to be fun unless, you know, they're stinky. Um, but it doesn't look like they're going to be. It looks like they have like some good chemistry so far already with all of his receivers and with his tight ends. Um, I think the other piece that I noticed is just like how good the Packers offensive line depth is. I, we're, I don't want to get too much into this because we'll probably talk about that for our main piece. But I mean, man, like he has protection all day. And I think for like a young quarterback to not have to have pressure in his face that much. And the, the Patriots played their starting defense. Like this is a very, very, very good defense that the Packers went up against. Um, that was really nice to see. And I'm just, I think I'm like, I want a number 50 jersey. Like, I think I'm in love with Zach Tom. I, I'm just oh, like, I thought you were going Teddy Bridgewater. I thought you were no. going Teddy Bridgewater. <laughs> Our number 50. I just like, don't take him off the field. I mean, he was out there just like totally shutting down the right side and like running after him as he's scrambling. And then also when he gets a late hit, he's like fighting for his guy. Like this yeah. team is just totally, totally backing Jordan. So yeah, loved yeah. it. I just, want to quick, I just want to quickly reiterate, I did lead my love thought with, uh, I don't want to overreact, but um, so <laughs> all, all very rational responses, and Perry, you're so right. Zach Tom is such a Packer, and, and he showed it on Saturday night. I'm really excited about him, assuming he's going to be the right tackle, but I, I don't know if he might be the center, but I know we'll get into that in a minute. So I um, feel like I said it on this show, and I didn't think it was that much of a hot take, but I felt like he was going to go in and take that starting spot and not give it up, and I just... You're so far, he really shouldn't be that. taken off the field yeah, <laughs> unless he's moving the center. It's such an interesting discussion because I, I don't want to move him from right tackle at all. I just, if he feels so natural at that spot and he's playing so well at that spot. I'm sure he can be good everywhere. I don't, I don't have much concern about that, but it, it just somehow it just feels right. I think having him and Bakhtiari be the bookend tackles, but you do have Yash and now you have Rashid Walker in the conversation too. And we'll talk more about the offensive line in just a moment. And whereas the interior, you know, Josh Meyer is still very questionable what he's going to bring to the table. You have, you know, John Runyon Jr., who I think you still feel very confident. Obviously, Alton, you feel great about. But then, you know, Sean Ryan, you know, Royce has had a tough offseason. Jake Hansen's had a tough camp and certainly is, is compounded with injuries as well. You know, you, you start looking at the interior and, and the depth is just so much worse. It just becomes a very interesting conversation. If Caleb Jones comes back, like, all of a sudden you've got a lot more tackles than you have interior players, and that might have to change the calculus a little bit. But I, I just want to see him at right tackle. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm kind of starting to sink my teeth into it and just be like, you're not moving that guy. Just keep him at right tackle. Set it and forget it. Set it and forget it. Because, like, you I even like watch John Clifford play, right? And that's backups on the line. And, like, he also still has – all day to throw. So it's, I mean, backers have been known for a while, right. To, to draft well. Um, and they have, they have a lot of depth. They just have to figure out like what to do with it, I think. And I just want to follow up on that a second, because I don't know if anyone obviously listens to move the sticks or just what, you know, for, for people who are listening to this, the, the pulse of the NFL overall is every single one of these preseason games that you tune into the, the defensive lines are beating the crap out of the offensive lines, like at an insane rate. The amount of depth that these defensive lines have is incredible. The edge rushers, interior defensive linemen, et cetera, and the depth on offensive line across the league is terrible. I mean, most teams don't have capable starters, you know, yeah. five capable starters, much less depth pieces that can go in and play. So the fact that Green Bay has done so well on all levels, first team, second team, third team, and is protected pretty darn well is a testament, obviously, to, you know, Brian Gutekinds, but the scouting staff, Adam Stenovich, Luke Butkus. I've said for a while now, Green Bay does one thing. They do a lot of things really well, but they do one thing very clearly better than anyone else, and that is identify late-round offensive linemen, get them in the system, 
let them play, you know, move around and, and back up for a couple of years and then get them ready. And when they're, when they need to go, they are ready to go. They are the best draft and develop offensive line team. And that goes to, again, scouting staff, Goody for taking them. That's what was so shocking when they didn't take a single one this year, but they've had, they have so many that like yeah. they're taking one just to have to cut another one, but I, they do a tremendous job. And that's even with Tenuta having a, a, you know, probably a pretty serious injury right now. Caleb Jones, not playing in that game. Their depth is pretty impressive. And I know and we'll talk about Jake Hansen, Royce Newman, but like and I've said this before, if, if Royce Newman's your fifth offensive lineman, you are in big trouble. If Royce Newman's like your 10th offensive lineman, you're, you're doing darn good for yourself. Like there's, yeah. there's a, I mean, there. to your point too, about so far this preseason, like D lines have been beating the crap. Like the Packers didn't give up a single QB hit flat, uh, against the Patriots and they yeah. haven't had a let up a single sack all of preseason yet. Which, again, like, you're maybe going up against um, depth, but, like, you watched what J.J. and Aguari did against the Pats, and, like, he's depth, yep. right? So it, it's not it, – it goes both ways, and the Pats had their starters out. Like, Matthew Judon was out there, and he was just being, like, locked – totally locked down. So it's it's great to see because you need to have something going into the season on lock, right? The young receivers and the young tight ends, they're going to struggle. You kind of know that you have your run game on lock because you trust Jones and Dylan. But like, if you can also have your offensive line really, really strong and let the QB and the pass catchers figure it out around that, I think you're in like much better shape than like imagine you just have like a porous O line and then Jordan Love can't do anything and just everything collapses. Yeah, and you look up, you know, you look across too, right? And the the fourth and fifth defensive linemen, sixth defensive linemen for every team, they're going to play in games every single game and yeah. rotate in. The third, fourth, fifth edge rushers are going to play every single game. Your hope is you never have to play your sixth offensive lineman, right? So when you get into those the the, the second and third teams and whatever, you're going to get you know offensive linemen that for most teams you're hoping to never have to put on the field versus defensive linemen and edge rushers who are going to consistently see the field every single week. So it, it's a big difference there. And to your point, Perry. Um, again, very great point. I think the offensive line's been been pretty fantastic in all phases so far. All right. Well, any other final preseason thoughts before we get into our progress report? I have many more, but let's go into the progress report because they're going to pop up there anyway. All right, deal. So what we're going to do is we want to rewind back about a month ago, basically, just as we were getting ready for the start of training camp and kind of put our, our thoughts into that you know, that time frame of, right, what were our expectations going into training camp position by position? And now after seeing this team through basically almost all of training camp, again, only two training camp practices left through two preseason games, family night, joint practices with the Bengals, two with the Patriots, et cetera. Do we feel better, worse, or the same position by position than we felt going into training camp? So let's obviously kick things off with quarterback, Jordan Love, Sean Clifford, Alex Magoo, Danny Etling no longer here. We wish you nothing but the best of luck, Danny Etling, but he is gone. So that was the group going into training camp. Perry, I will start with you. As we sit here today, are you feeling better, the same, or worse than what you were going into training camp? Oh, definitely better. For sure better. And I think I probably just went through why. But um, right. yeah, I mean, it's just Jordan Love has been such a question mark. We've had like barely any like tape on him at all anything to like, compare a couple of practices like you said I mean he would ran with the ones and OTAs when Rodgers didn't show up like just such a like minimal sample size and it was enough to be excited because you can see the raw potential but you knew that there was so much he had to work on right like footwork and accuracy and I think accuracy is probably still the one thing he needs to continue to get better on but you just didn't know how he was going to like step in to that role um and so far I've just really like what I've seen so far, just his ability. I mean, we're going to repeat what we've been saying, just like the command of the offense and just some like kind of more veteran things, right? Like you're going to see a lot of rookies play this season first year out the gate and they're not going to have, you know, his ability, what he can see, you know, he, his explanation, right. Of the Jaden Reed touchdown of like, he kind of like carried him through to the second window. Like those are vet things that he's been able to learn because he was able to sit behind Aaron Rodgers, his cadence, which I can't wait to hear in a real game. Cause apparently he's got the hard count. He just has some like traits that I didn't necessarily expect him to have right now. So I'm just excited. Cause I think he's on a really good upward trajectory. Alex. Yeah, yeah, Sean Clifford aside, I think Perry nailed it. I, I, I mean, looking at our options, right? He's de you definitely don't feel worse. There's no way you feel worse about this quarterback room. 
I went on a very long rant last week on ESPN Madison, but I don't understand how you can watch Jordan Love, strictly talking Jordan Love, and feel the same as you did a month ago, right? Like, I, I don't know how you can see the flashes we've seen and not feel at least slightly more optimistic than you did a month ago because you have seen, as Perry called it, the raw talent, the raw ability, but also then the decisiveness, right? There was that pass uh, early in the game, uh, obviously, when Love was playing against the Patriots on Saturday, where he threw it to Luke Musgrave. It fell incomplete. If he would have thrown it in front of him, it would have been intercepted. He threw it behind him. It fell incomplete. Not the end of the world, but that is a snap second decision that he's that he's surveying and analyzing and making the correct decision, which I think that's what you were hoping to see, right? The decisiveness got better. The, the, the understanding and reading of defenses got back better. The poise got better. The confidence got better. And all of those things to me seem better than what the limited sample size that we had seen prior. So I just have no idea how you can't feel better about the quarterback position for the Packers as it stands on, on August 21st. Yeah, we're all on the same page here. And I'll leave Jordan Love to the side since you guys did such a beautiful job of explaining it already. But I mean, Sean Clifford, right? Like th this looks like a legitimate backup quarterback. And, I, you know, going into the season, that there were, or at least into to training camp, there was, there was no guarantee of that. And in fact, it felt like, all right, you know what? They're probably just going to go with Clifford. And if Jordan Love gets hurt, they're just going to get a really high draft pick, right? But like he has been a really, really fun player so far. And I'm not saying he's just going to go in and, and start winning football games or things like that. It would it'd probably be a bit of a struggle, but he's been, I think, far better than advertised as well. So uh, I think overall, I mean, you can make the the slight argument that, you know, maybe Etling and Magoo haven't turned out quite as much. Or who cares? Like, you know, you've got – Sean Clifford, that looks like a legitimate two, and, and Jordan Love on the upward trajectory. So I'm right there with you. I think we're all in lockstep. This is a better quarterback group right now than I think we thought it was going into training camp. All right, Alex, I'll let you kick things off with running back. You've got Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, Patrick Taylor, Tyler Goodson. I don't know if you're familiar with Tyler Goodson. He's also no, I'm not. Uh, Emmanuel Wilson, Lou Nichols, and then uh, McCrary is on there as well. Uh, your thoughts on the running back group now as uh, opposed to going into camp? Yeah, this is going to sound weird uh, because this is the one I actually struggled with the most of making my decision better, uh, the same or worse, right? Because we know the guys that are going to be on the field are, are Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. We already knew they were the guys, right? Like, so nothing they've done this this uh, preseason has moved the needle for me. However, Emmanuel Wilson has burst onto the scenes. And you guys know how much I love Tyler Goodson. But Emmanuel Wilson is one of the 53 best players on the Green Bay Packers right now. And maybe I'm overreacting. I feel slightly better, but what you're going to get this season is, is those first two names I mentioned in Jones and Dylan. But if something horrible happens, I won't even say the, the I word, um, is Emmanuel Wilson. I feel pretty good about him. Now, I don't know what he's doing on teams. I, I, I personally don't care about that. I know the Packers do. I don't. I care how you are as a running back. And what I've seen out of Emmanuel Wilson is he's a pretty darn good third option for a running back. So I feel slightly better. All right, Perry? Um, yeah, I feel the same and like similar reasoning, you know, like the Packers have Jones and Dylan, and you hope you get the majority of them. Now, I think we'd like to see their usage increase. Um, and I think we will with Jordan Love at quarterback, but, um, I have in my notes from the Pats game, like has Wilson made his case for RB3 and I think he has, um, I think he was really fun to watch. Um, but again, I don't think that RB3 is going to be playing all too much. So for this exercise, the same. But I think the depth that running back has pleasantly surprised me more than I thought it would. I'm going to I'm gonna go with you, Perry, as well. So we beat you out in this one, Alex. So we're going same <laughs> for running back, two out of three. Um, here's how I'm where, where I'm at right now. Jones is the same. Dylan is the same. Yep. Tyler Goodson we knew is fun and exciting. We don't know what the, you know, if he can get on the field enough or whatever. To me, that's the same. He's also hurt right now. McCrary's McCrary doesn't matter. Oh, sorry, no offense to McCrary. Uh, Patrick Taylor is the exact same as we thought he was going in. And to me, Lou Nichols and Emmanuel Wilson have flipped spots. It looks like if you would have told me Emmanuel Wilson was the seventh rounder and Lou Nichols was the undrafted free agent, that that seems like it makes sense to me. So I'm I'm kind of like two guys switch spots. Everything else kind of remains the same. I'm not quite there yet on Wilson to say. You know, like he's he's one of the 53. It would not shock me at all if they went with two running backs again and right. then just put a bunch of guys on the practice squad. And if one of them gets claimed, so be it. You still probably feel comfortable with Taylor and Goodson and whoever else there is. But um, yeah, either way, I feel very similar to, to what I felt going in. Just Nichols and Wilson swap a little bit. All right, let's go wide okay. receiver. 
I'll kick this one off. You've got obviously Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, Jaden Reed, Dontavian Wicks, Samari Toure, Grant Dubose, Malik Heath, Bo Melton, Deuce Watts, Cody Crest, and Jadakis Bonds as your wide receiver core. I, f- I don't know about you guys. I feel I feel awesome about this group. Feel better than I did going in. Christian Christian Watson is going to be one of those players who has a quietly nice camp. You don't hear a whole ton about him because when he makes plays, they're spectacular. But they're you know you don't see it all the time or whatever. He's going to have a better regular season and he's going to have a training camp in preseason. It's just the way it is. He's far too talented. They're going to scheme things up for him through the course of the year. He's going to be fantastic. Romeo Dobbs is taking a step. Jaden Reed is really good right now. And that like that could have been the next Amari Rogers. Like you have no idea what it's going to be. He is really good right now. Dontavian Wicks looks like a player. I still like Samari Toure. Grant DuBose in like two weeks time has already shown why he should make a roster. Malik Heath is not only like in the roster conversation, like he's in the like, how do we get this guy on the field conversation? Everything else doesn't matter. They've got seven legitimate wide receivers that are 53 man rosterable. Maybe you could make a slight argument that like Bo Melton hasn't, you know, made a name for himself or whatever. It doesn't matter. This is, this is better in my opinion. Harry. Yeah. Um, I think if you had asked me a month ago, you know, are we going to be like trying to figure out if they're going to keep six or seven wide receivers because there's too many that have shown are worthy of making the team, I would have been like, no freaking way. So I feel like the fact that we're here, um, I feel better. (laughs) I mean, like there's just like the depth has really shown in these preseason games and It's fun because you knew Christian Watson was going to be one, and it's been really awesome to see Dobbs become two um, because you can just see the connection with love. Like, that sideline toe drag catch is just, like, out of this world. Um, I like that the depth guys are – they're very Matt LaFleur wide receivers, right? Like you're watching them and you're like, okay, we know who's going to get these, the targets, right? Yeah. But what are you doing to like show that you can fit into this offense? And like, they're blocking their asses off. And so you just feel good about like, if you needed someone in there in the run game, like they're just all going to kind of do, they're going to fit into the scheme really nicely, um, whether they get targets or whether they're just blocking. So um, I'm excited. I'm very excited to just, I just want a full game of the ones because all the, the couple of series we've gotten are so much fun. Um, and I want to see it all for two hours. Just pause right there, Alex. I want to get your take on this too, but can we just for a, a millisecond, we talked about Jordan Love already. Your 11 personnel is going to be Aaron Jones in the backfield with Luke Musgrave at tight end, Jaden Reed in the slot, Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs on the outside. Just think of the playmaking that is going to be on the field with Jordan Love, David <sighs> Bocciari, and Elton Jenkins making up arguably the best left side of the offensive line in football. We've talked about how Zach Tom looks at right tackle. If like John Runyon Jr. is your fourth best offensive lineman, you're in a pretty good spot. Fifth offensive lineman, we still got to figure out a little bit. But also, I will say this too, if like if that is the rest of your 11 and Josh Myers is the one that you're worried about at center – also, you're in very, very good hands, yeah. right? So, like, that that's not the worst thing in the world. Yeah. I don't have any other that, – that's all I'm going to say. Like, that – it's it's so freaking exciting. And I don't know, again, I don't know what that yeah. is doing wins and losses. This is going to be a team that has to learn how to play consistent football and win football games. But, man, it's hard to imagine it's not going to be fun along the way. All right, Alex, go ahead. Oh, sorry, did you want to say something, Perry? No, I was just going to say, I mean, for right now, it's just pieces – but the pieces are really exciting because they're really versatile and they're really fast. And the Green Bay Packers haven't been this speedy in a really long time. And they're all kind of putting it together together, right? Like the chemistry is going to be there together. So they're going to ride the ups and downs together. But I think there's going to be like a lot more really fun ups than I originally thought. I'm right there with you guys. Like I I can't sit here and tell you how many games they're going to win or lose. But, but I can certainly tell you they have some really freaking exciting pieces on this offense, right? It's, like, really hard to contain my excitement. That's why I'm signing on to this episode saying I think Jordan Love's good, right? Because we, we saw, we've saw we seen some flashes already. Can you imagine? To Perry's point she keeps making, I can't wait until they play a full game, right? Can you imagine the flashes we're going to see this season? And, again, we're going to see some lows. Like, there's no doubt there's going to be growing pains. But when, when this team's humming on offense – 
I think there's going to be some really fun stuff we see. When it comes to the wide receiver room now, and, and this is really where, what I'm struggling with in this exercise is because a month ago we were thinking about all the hypotheticals and I was probably in a worst case scenario mode. I feel better about wide receiver too, and to all the points you guys already made. So there's some really fun pieces here. Jaden Reed, I was excited about when the Packers drafted him. I'm really excited about him after that touchdown catch last night. And he's just going to be dynamic. He 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 has – I know he's bigger than him size-wise, but he has some Randall Cobb feel down. been saying that for six months. And I think we, we saw some of uh, those flashes again uh, on Saturday. So, wow, I'm, I'm just excited. You guys have me ready to run through a brick wall. I'm fired up. That play they called, they've, they've oh. called before with Rodgers and Cobb, identically. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that, but uh, yeah. it makes sense. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, it's been it's been fun to watch Jaden Reed already show showcase just some of the stuff that I think he's capable of doing. All right, let's continue along though because we got a lot of positions to go through. Let's move to tight end slash fullback. Luke Musgrave, Tucker Craft, Tyler Davis is now out for the year. We know Austin Allen, Dre Miller, Josiah Deguara, and then Hank Pearson, Henry Pearson. I think Perry, is it your turn to start? I think it's your turn to start. All right, what are you feeling? Better, worse, the same? This was my toughest one. Um, I think because there's things I feel a lot better about and then there's things I feel worse about. So I feel like I came out kind of at the same just when you weigh it out. So what I feel better about is Luke Musgrave looks awesome. (laughs) Um, Not just because he's playing like a hundred snaps and getting targeted up the wazoo by Jordan Love. And I just think I've said it on the show before, like just having a dynamic tight end, like what he brings to the table just elevates every offense. Like we have not had someone like him in so long. And we just talked about the wide receivers. Like you get Christian Watson, Dobbs, Aaron Jones, and then you have a Luke Musgrave also. I mean, all of a sudden defenses are having to like game plan and you're getting mismatches somewhere. Um, I also loved, again, I'm going to talk about blocking just because I know that this is a Matt LaFleur offense and you're going to need to do that. But like the man was up on a defensive end multiple times in this game and like did just fine. Um, so you're getting this like six, six speedster who is going to catch the ball, but also can take on a defensive end. Like that's just, that's just an otherworldly athlete. Um, but you're not seeing much from anybody else. Right. So like Kraft is on the field a lot, but you're not really seeing him get targeted Josiah Deguara, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Like, he's going to be blocking. I know. I really want I really, really want him to, like, do something. But I haven't seen anything. And then you lose Tyler Davis. And, like, Austin Allen is, like, respectfully just a guy. So the depth just isn't there. So, yes, I'm very excited about this awesome, you know, tight end one. But the rest of the room still gives me pause. So I think I've evened out at the same. Alex? You completely nailed that, Perry. I have nothing to add, right? But other than respectfully, Austin Allen is just a guy was a terrific line. <laughs> other than that, I got nothing else to add. Well said. Uh, well, well, you guys win the tiebreaker because we'll, we'll, we'll go same on this one. I'm going better because of Luke Musgrave, and he's been so impressive, and he looks so special. And it's like I've said all along, I'm trying to temper my own expectations. I'm done with it. I'm over with it. He's too freaking good. <laughs> Uh, like he has been so impressive, so fast that like, I don't even care. Everyone else could get cut tomorrow and you could do a one man tight end room. And I am feeling better about this tight end room than I have ever done. And and like, then I felt since like the Jermichael Finley days, probably. So yes, I'd like a little bit more depth there. Tucker craft has been kind of okay so far. He's we're seeing with Tucker craft, what we've warned about with all rookie tight ends, right? Like, Hey, it takes time. Like it's going to be a little bit like, don't like, that's what we're seeing with Tucker craft, which is normal. Davis being out sucks. We talked about Allen. Dre Miller's nothing. Josiah DeGuara's been disappointing. Pearson's been okay as fullback, and now he's hurt. So, yes, everything else worse. But I'm so excited about Musgrave. I'm actually going better. But we'll, we'll go same on that one based on the, the uh, arguments from both of you that I will, uh, I will yield to both of you. All right, Alex, offensive line. We got a ton of people. Bakhtiari, Jenkins, Myers, Runyon, Tom, Nyman, Ryan, Hanson, Newman, Walker, Jones, DeLance, Empey, Schneider, Tenuta, and Telford. I made one of those names up. Which one was it? I'm just kidding. I didn't. Go ahead, Alex. You thought on the offensive line. I was I was gonna guess Telford. I don't even know. Um, uh, I, I think we summed this up 20 minutes ago. I feel better. Um, I, the right side of the line was obviously the big question. Zach Tom looks absolutely awesome. Uh, I'm really excited about him. 50 is an offensive lineman, though. I'm so used to AJ Hawk. Uh, so that's the one thing throw me off. But Teddy Bridgewater is number 50, as Andy pointed out earlier. So anyway, total side note. Um, yeah, I feel better. 
I, I don't think it, I have much more to say. We've talked about it already. I'm going same, and I'll let Perry do the the, wow. the tiebreaker. I feel I feel better about Zach Tom. I feel better about Sean Ryan than I felt going in by far. I didn't know if he was even going to make the team. He's clearly making the team now. And Rasheed Walker, I feel, I mean, just really, really good about after his performance this past game against yeah. uh, New England. He's 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 been fantastic. I, I could go more about Walker, but I won't for now. Um, I feel worse about Josh Myers. I was hopeful that he in year three was going to take a step. I haven't really seen that too much yet. Royce Newman looks cuttable at this point. Jake Hansen hurts and has not had a good camp. Luke Tenuta hurts. Caleb Jones hurt. So it's more based on injuries that I'm more in the even camp. And again, just Myers struggling a little bit. I'm in the even camp, but um, definitely don't hate better. I think, I think it's very close either way. Perry? Yeah, I'm probably closer to you, Andy, just simply because we have such high expectations always for Packers offensive lines. They're just like meeting them right now. Um, and I think they look great, and I'm very excited that they're going to protect the hell out of Jordan Love. Um, but we kind of knew going into the season that at least the starters were like, you know, some some of the best, you know, Pro Bowl All Pro guys, and a lot of potential in our are now right tackle. So the the botch snaps like definitely make me nervous because um, that can completely derail a game to no one's fault, but you know the centers. Um, so that's my only thing. But yeah, I mean they look phenomenal right now so you're going even or better you're the tiger I'm, even. I'm around even all right yeah. so we got even for offensive line uh, i'll do defensive line all right, i'll start it off kenny clark tj slayton Devonte wyatt colby wooden jonathan ford uh carl brooks the rest don't matter let's just be real that's the six that you got really going in um i think wyatt had a little bit of a tough week against new england i'm hoping he, he bounces back next week i may be a little bit lower I'm probably around the same with him going in. I, I just don't know what to expect yet. Kenny looks like Kenny. Slayton looks really good. I'm really excited about TJ Slayton. Carl Brooks and Colby Wooden both look ready to play right now. And Jonathan Ford looks leaps and bounds better than he did at any point a season ago. So I'm going better for defensive line. Perry, what about you? I feel the same. I mean, I kind of think of this all lumped into one with the outside linebackers as well. So I'm sure we'll talk about the pass rush too. But just in general, this front looks so much better than I was expecting going into the season. And I think just because we weren't sure there were just a lot of guys that we haven't seen. And like, it's just because they have rookies and young guys and we wanted to see everyone take a step. But I think right now, just seeing the way they've played the last two games, um, it, they look stronger than I was expecting. Alex. Yeah. So this is, and I'm fine with better winning, but this is just where it comes down to like, what I was feeling a month ago. And and I was really high on this room. Nobody got me more excited about TJ Slayton than Andy Herman. Um, <laughs> Kenny Clark is going to Kenny Clark. And I was really high on Devonte Wyatt to your point. He had a, it sounds like a rough week. Obviously I wasn't there like you were, but I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I felt really good about this room. I think we've seen some really good things out of them. I, I, I expect big things. I, I feel the same. All right, Perry, you are up with edge. We'll go better for defensive line. Yeah, I'm so pumped about this room. Like, they were just, they've been destroying. And I know you take preseason with a grain of salt, but they're also missing their best player right now. And you just, you can't not watch, you know, JJ Anigbari, two sacks, a strip, and a fumble recovery, like, all in one go. Just, and, but I think, like, the rest of the line is going, we know who Preston is. Um, I think LVN is a lot more raw than I was necessarily expecting. Like he's going to do some things, but he has a lot of work, like a very Rashawn Gary type, but it's all there. Um, and then you get Rashawn back, hopefully um, early in the season. And I think these guys can do some real damage. So better. Alex? Yeah, I'm probably in the same boat, right? Like I, I just, I'm curious on when the growing pains come because this is a young group, right? And I just feel like we haven't really seen them to, to Perry's point, right? JJ and Igbari is a second year guy. LVN's a rookie. Um, uh, you know, there's a bunch of other young guys in there. So I'm just kind of waiting for the growing pains. Or are we skipping that step? I feel better, but I, 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 think, I go ahead. I think, yeah. the, I think the big thing, right. Is that what once healthy, Rashawn and Preston are your guys, right? right. Like yeah. your first ones. And I mean, there might be some growing pains with Rashawn coming off the ACL, 
But like you, you know what to expect from those two. Even Justin Hollins, not a young guy anymore. Enig Barre in year two, like, and, and we've seen like he's taking a little bit of a step. He was a nice rotational piece as a rookie. So right. like we, we kind of know what the, the floor is there for him as well. And it looks like he's taken a significant step over last year, which I expected once he put on a little bit more functional strength, which I think he has. And then it's like, yeah, LVN and Brenton Cox, maybe those two, if, if, if you know, if they, well, obviously LVN's going to make the team, but if Cox does, we'll see. But like, yeah, those, those guys are going to go through some growing pains and stuff. But like, now you're talking about like LVN might be, I don't know, 20, 25 snaps and like Cox is probably inactive on game days. So yeah, if, I mean, if you have to get into the depth, you know, and, it, and all of a sudden it's like, you know, Hollins, LVN and, and Cox and, you know, Enigbare are your top four and, you know, for whatever reason, then yeah, I think there could be, but I think the veterans sort of steady this ship at the top once Gary's back healthy. It's a very fair point. And, and, and again, a rational one, right? Like my brain in the preseason goes into depth mode, right? Because you're right. I, I guess I'm just forgetting, uh, obviously not Rashawn because we, we need him back and we'll get him back. Hopefully it seems sooner than maybe we initially expected. Um, and Preston. So you're right. I, I, but again, I don't really know where I fall here. Somewhere between same and better. I had, I had same too in large part because I think I had high expectation, higher expectations for Van Ness. I probably should have tempered that a little bit as well. And it's just been a little bit of a struggle for him, which I was, I'm slightly surprised. But I did think he had a pretty nice day against New England overall. Um, but I, I'm good with either. Well, well, Perry's the smarter of the three of us. So we'll lean on sure. her and we'll go with better on this one. So yeah. we're going to go better <laughs> for Edge. All right, linebacker, Alex, you are up. Campbell, Quay, McDuffie, Wilson, Carpenter, Phillips. The same. Um, I, I haven't seen as much pop out of Quay Walker as maybe I expected. My expectations were very high, and I think all three of us were in agreement on that, how excited we were for Quay this year. Um, but other than that, I, I, nobody's popped off the page to me. And again, Andy, I, I, I lean on you because you've been at the practices, and I don't see as much other than what I see on Twitter. Has anybody surprisingly popped off the page for you at this position? Because I feel the same overall. No, I, I'm I'm closer to maybe a little bit worse, but right around the same. Um, I think Campbell obviously hurt right now, hurts and stings a little bit, but it sounds like he's going to be ready week one. Oh, yeah, an okay camp, but nothing that popped off the page. I'd say the same for Quay. I think he's taken a small step, but I think for the most part, kind of what I expected so far. McDuffie's been fine. Wilson's been as expected. Carpenter, I think, is that I thought he had a tough game against Wayne. He didn't even get in until the fourth quarter. Um, I kind of had some hopes that maybe he could come in and be like maybe even have a role or be a piece. Like he he is very, very much a work in progress at linebacker. Like he's another player, kind of like in the Dallin Levitt mold right now, where if he makes the team, just almost take linebacker off of his name and just put special teams because like that's that's what he's gonna bring to the table at, at this point. Phillips has been a kind of a, a nice little surprise, but he's a practice squad by, guy at bat, best. So I'd go slightly worse here, but it, it's also pretty close to, to being the same as I expected. I feel worse, for sure. Um, yeah. I just, like, when Campbell got hurt, it kind of, like, hit me how thin that room is. Um, like, they really need him healthy, and they really need him to play up to, like, the standard that we're used to. Um, and I agree, Alex. I, I think it's been a really quiet time for Quay. And that doesn't mean that the lights won't turn on, like, when the season starts, right? Like, I still feel like there's there's plenty of time. But you're, we're going to have to see more from him. Like, the team is going to expect more. And he needs to deliver more than what he's given, especially if he's going to be wearing the green dot. Like, that's a huge responsibility to communicate the entire defense. Um, so, obviously, I'm not privy to kind of, like, that side of things. But they're going to put the responsibility on him. He's going to have to execute it. I just get a little nervous when you see someone get injured and you realize, okay, now we're one injury away from this being a little bit of a disaster. I think that's a great point. I, I'm, I'm cool with worst here. I just, I'll be honest with you. When, when we uh, submitted this as, as our topic for the day, I, I didn't think this word would pop up a lot outside of maybe safety and kicker, right? Worse. I didn't think we'd throw it around a lot, but I, I think it's fair here. To be fair, this is the first one that we've come to a consensus is worse so far. So yeah. we've had we've had a couple debates, but so far this is the only one that's come up as worse. All right, corner, you got Jair, Douglas, Stokes, Valentine, Nixon, Gaines, Valentine, Thomas, SJC, Hooper, and Ford, Tyrell Ford, not Rudy Ford, not Jonathan Ford, Tyrell Ford. Um, I am going as expected on this one. So to me, Jair, awesome. Douglas has been really good. Stokes has not played yet. Nixon is, is exactly what I expected at slot so far. They move Innis from safety to corner. He struggled a bit, but whatever. Valentine, Thomas, SJC, Hooper, Ford, nondescript, not the depth that I was kind of hoping for. Valentine, 
better than expected. Really tough game as I went back and watched the tape against New England. You're going to have days like that as a seventh round pick, but I still excited overall about a seventh round pick and what he's been able to bring to the table. But basically, if you would have told me that like one of the guys not named Nixon, Stokes, Jair, and Douglas had like a slightly surprising camp of everyone and everyone else struggled, I'd be like, yeah, that sounds about right. So I'm, I'm going to go same on this one. Perry? Yep. I feel the same just because you know who your guys are. Right. And you feel really good about your guys, but going into the season, I was like, again, one injury and it's like, who the heck is there? Now I do feel better because I think Valentine has had a good camp, but not to bring up this topic because I'm so against this, but like, obviously when Joe Barry was asked about Rasul moving to safety and he was like, what, what are you talking about? Right. And again, you shouldn't move Rasul because he's a very talented outside corner who should not be moved from where he's excelling ever. Um, I think it stems from people getting really excited about Valentine, which is fair, but I hope that those people watch the Pats game and remember that he is a seventh round rookie and it's the preseason and he's going to have all the growing pains that rookies are going to have. Now, do I feel better about our depth because I think he could, you know, go into a game if needed and do something meaningful? Sure, but I don't want him as our starting outside corner. I want Rasul Douglas and Jair Alexander as our starting outside corners. So I feel the exact same. Preach. Alex? Yeah, I'm glad you brought it up because that's exactly where I was about to go. Um, I feel the same overall, right? You know you know who your guys are and, and you feel comfortable with them. I think this is a group, even in the preseason, I would say this is a group you probably top three felt best about. Um, so I, I, I still feel that way. Um, and, and I have nothing else to feel otherwise about. I mean, again, Carrington Valentine had a really exciting game against Cincy and has a fun camp. But the the overreaction of, of maybe making him a starter and moving Rasul because the group we're going to talk about next is so damn bad. That's crazy talk to me. So uh, I, I'm, I'm totally with you guys. I feel the same. All right. I think, Perry, you're up for safety, I think. Oh, boy. Um, Here we go. See the I don't I don't know if I feel the same or if I feel worse because I went into this being like I have no idea who's starting in this group. And a month later I'm still like I have no idea who should be starting in this group which makes me feel like I should feel worse because I would have hoped at this point we would have some idea um but I truly do not. I think like each of the guys have shown good and each of the guys have shown not so good and um I just don't <laughs> I don't feel great about this group going into week one um I'm assuming Savage is gonna start opposite alongside somebody uh it's just like TBD who that somebody is I just I'm disappointed that no one has seized this like wide open opportunity to take a starting spot on a roster you know what I mean and and really like run with it um I would love your thoughts Andy because you're really like in there watching if there's anybody that to you just is feeling like they're starting to like get ahead in the race but yeah I don't feel good uh oh sorry go ahead Alex no I'm just I'm nervous for your response that's all yeah so I'll say this like it's certainly like based on Darnell Savage's playing time and them taking him out right away it certainly seems like he's going to be safety one I went in this offseason, you know, like into training camp with about the lowest expectations possible for the safety group. And it's worse. <laughs> like yep, It is yep. worse. Like Savage looks the exact same. He's had a couple really nice plays. He's had also a couple plays where you're like, have you played? Have you, you've played safety before, right? Like you, this is not your first time playing safety because it certainly kind of looks like it sometimes. Like, but again, they also had like a pick six and some other really nice stuff. That's the exact Darnell Savage experience we've had for five years now. It's the exact same thing, which isn't good enough. He's not a starting safety. He's just not. That's It's way too much. You don't know what the heck you're going to get. Rudy Ford, similar player as to last year. It's fine. You want Rudy Ford in an ideal world as like your fifth safety special teams demon who can go in and play like in an emergency role. That's where you want him, and he might be the second best safety at this point. Jonathan Owens, I love Simone Biles. I want her to stay on the team, but like Jonathan <laughs> Owens had, had, it was probably the worst safety over the first two preseason games so far. Like it's, it's just not good enough. He he's not fleet footed enough in the open field. His coverage hasn't been good enough. His run support's not been good enough. That's been bad. It's a very more like kind of fine. He's just like, like, he just got his knee rolled up in a ugly looking way. I don't know what the prognosis is. Maybe he's totally fine. All I know is I watched that on a few different angles and that thing did not look good. 
So like that is worrisome. Anthony Johnson Jr. I had some excitement as a seventh round pick that like maybe he can come in and start making a name. I've seen a couple flashes from him. He's not ready to be a starter yet. And I don't know, maybe you just give him the reps because why the heck not? But like, they certainly don't seem to be ready to make that decision. And I, I ultimately think that's kind of the right decision as well. Um, Dallin Levitt's not a starter. You know, Benny Sapp, maybe not even a practice squad guy. I thought maybe Innis Gaines would be able to get his name in the conversation. They moved him to slot and he struggled there. Like, it's worse. There's, no, there's nothing better. And there's very few things that are even the same. And it's like almost every, almost everyone is worse. So like it's, it's, it's ugly right now. And I would not be surprised if they were super active on the waiver wire when, when cuts got made just to get some new blood in the room. I hope so. Um, I think Savage is going to be your starter. I have no idea who the, the starter opposite of him is. It, it may like, you could put a sock around their eyes and just be like, line up all of the safeties and just be like, ah, you two. And it's probably going to be the same no matter what. So that was beautifully said. Uh, let's wrap uh, up the safety conversation with a quick pack a day podcast group exercise. Perry, one month ago, what position group did you feel the worst about? Safety. safety. Andy, what safety. position group do you currently feel the worst about? Safety. And Alex, safety. and Alex, what do you vote this group status is? Worse. All right, let's move on. Yeah. All right. Deal. All right. Alex, lead us home with Matt Orzek and special teams. And obviously um, this comes down to Andres Carlson, right? Correct. And, and, O'Donnell and, and Whelan have been fine at punter. Right. Orzek and Hatcher have been fine at long snapper. The rest of special teams fine. Jaden Reed looks fun as a punt returner. We know what Nixon's going to do. We're hoping for a step from, you know, Bisaccia's group. We don't even know who's going to be out there on the main special teams group. This comes down to Anders Carlson. So Alex, better or worse? Is, is it actually insane? I'm about to say the same because I didn't have high expectations going in. I knew he wasn't very good in college. I mean, he was fine in college. He got worse as his uh, five years at Auburn went on. But I I just didn't have high expectations. And he's really showed why maybe drafting a kicker in the fifth round isn't a very smart idea sometimes. Um, I, they're going to stick with him. You might lose games because of him, but he's going to be the kicker. Uh, in, in 2023. So I, I honestly feel the same as much as I probably should feel yeah. worse. The good news is he might be better than the guy the 49ers took in the third round. So that's a positive True. step at this point. But Perry, uh, what about you? Anything over the 49ers. Um, I feel the same. I, I think we've been really spoiled as fans and our bar is really high. And like, I had a feeling they wouldn't bring Mason Crosby back, but like, it's going to be interesting just being like every other NFL fan and being like kind of on edge for every single kick for a while until he proves himself. But it was fun watching him kick the 52 yarder. Like I, I think hopefully he just evens it out and it'll all be okay. I trust Rich Bisaccia actually. I do. Here's, that's Here's the thing that's going to be fun about Anders Carlson is like, you're going to have the same exact feeling for like a 60 yarder that you do for a 30 yarder. Like, and, you know, a like oh, yeah, make this. <laughs> and an extra point too. Like <laughs> you could easily make this and just crush it. No worries whatsoever. And it could be like, you could totally miss this. You have no idea. Holy it's like a fun it. mystery box going into every single kick. It's going to be like seat of your pants stuff. Um, but it's, I don't know if I agree with the word fun, Andy. I don't know if fun. fun is the right word. What more could you want? Uh, I'm going to, I had slightly worse, but I'm cool with you guys uh, sticking with same as well. Um, I, I don't know. Like, Hope springs eternal going into the, and I'm like, yeah, maybe this guy's just going to be really good. And, you know, there's certainly been a lot of hiccups along the way already. So uh, I'll go slightly worse, but I'll, I'll, I'll lean on you two and we'll go same. So here are our final results. Quarterback better, running back same, wide receiver better, tight end same, offensive line same, defensive line better, edge better, linebacker worse, corner same, safety worse, special team same. That's where we come huh. up. So we have... Two worse, safety and linebacker. We have, what, one, two, three, four, four better. Edge, defensive line, wide receiver, and quarterback. Everything else was the same. One, two, three, four, five as the same. So so how do you guys feel overall about this team than you did a month ago? It, it's nice reacting to tangible football, right? Like uh, actual results rather than hypothesizing and guessing and estimating what this team could be. It's nice to actually see stuff. So uh, this exercise brought pretty much what I expected. You'll feel, uh, uh, I mean, the position groups you nailed were maybe our biggest questions going into the season that, that we said are better, right? Quarterback, wide receiver, 
uh, O-line was better, if I'm not mistaken. So some of the question marks we had, was it the same? Regardless, I, I think I think our earlier tones in the episode it, it, when we started talking 50 minutes ago was, yeah, the right side of the line had question marks, and Zach Tom has shown he belongs on the field at all times. So I feel better there, right? So I think some of our biggest questions going into the season, now we have – more things to overreact to, which, of course, is the, what we do this time of year. I'm just curious to see how it all translates. And that's not to say every game or every snap is going to be better at those position groups or every position or, you know, every group we had worse is going to be worse. It's just – it's going to be a weird year. But I, I feel, to use our word, better, you know, maybe than I did a month ago because we have real uh, tangible stuff to measure now. Yeah, I feel I feel better in a, in a non – you know, insignificant way. Like I, I definitely feel better. It's still five and 12, 11 and six, anything in between. Sure. Yep. Definitely possible. But uh, I, I definitely feel better than I did going in. And I, although I will say this, I was super excited, go, excited going into camp because of all the youth and, and just athleticism, excitement and, and all these different really fun players. I feel that exact same way now. Super excited about the season. No idea how it ends up. Still super excited. What about you? Yeah. Peter? I feel better, but I think similar to, similarly to Alex, this year was going to be such was such a black box. Like you just really had no idea what to expect, and now you're actually seeing it. So the picture is becoming clearer. Um, and I think like we won't know until I think I'll have a good sense of the way the season is going to go. Like within the first month, um, it could get better from there, but I, I still am like being slightly cautious with my optimism because I just don't want to get hurt Um, (laughs) because this team has done that to me a number of times. Um, But I think overall, like you said, Alex, some of the larger question marks have some answers now and it's hard not to get excited, especially, I mean, the main one is the quarterback and we all feel better about him. And that's like, quite honestly, all that really matters going into the season. Um, So I, I'm just ready to see more. And you can tell that Jordan is ready to give more because he says he's ready for week one. Can't freaking wait. This might be our longest episode yet and totally worth it. This was a lot of fun to discuss. Perry, before we get out of here, where can we follow you? Where can we find your work? Get your plugs in. Uh, Just follow me on Twitter. Follow the podcast at PWSS Podcast on Twitter. Uh, Maggie and I, once the season starts, we'll start going back to twice a week episodes. Uh, preview and post-game review. So we're really excited for that because that means football season's back. Sir Alex Strofe. You can find me on Twitter at Alex underscore Strofe and uh, the great day in huddle with uh, another specialist. We'll talk to former uh, Panthers and Jags punter Brad Nortman tomorrow about Anders Carlson. How much should we worry about this? I'm actually very interested in his thoughts. So you can find that 6-7 to seven on ESPN Madison or wherever you get your podcasts on Monday. Check both those two amazing people out. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. You can follow the podcast at Packaday Podcast. That's going to do it for us today. I'll be right back here tomorrow with an all new show. Make sure not to miss it. Make sure to subscribe, do all the fun stuff. But until next time, and as always, go Pack Go. Go Pack Go.